Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 2. The Agriculture Ministry has distributed 40 water tanks to farmers in Manchester under its drought mitigation program. The farmers received the tanks on Wednesday and were urged to store water so they can maintain production. A total of 300 water tanks valued at $5 million are being distributed to farmers across the island. And with forecasts for above normal dry spells and dry temperatures extending to December, the ministry will also be providing farmers with additional assistance to implement climate smart practices. In that regard, we will continue to provide support to the most vulnerable and critical production areas through the Government of Jamaica Adaptation Program and other programs as we seek to build productivity within the sector. Extensive drought last year cost the sector in excess of $125 million. The new Electricity Act passed in the House of Representatives this Tuesday will prevent a light and power company from cutting off the electricity of paying customers. Energy Minister Philip Powell gave that assurance as he responded to concerns about the Jamaica Public Service Company's practices when faced with communities with high electricity theft rates. The leader of the opposition was concerned that sometimes the JPS go, goes into an area and disconnects everybody, even those persons who are legitimately paying customers. Um, in response, Mr. Speaker, I wish to know that the bill that we are hopefully passing today the JPS license and the OUR's enforcement powers provide sufficient safeguards to prevent the single buyer from depriving paying customers of electricity. The Electricity Act is intended to modernize Jamaica's electricity sector and should make it easier to bring new generating capacity to the power grid. What we are seeking to do is to put energy finally on a path that will enable it to be a real engine for growth of the economy. The new legislation promotes energy efficiency and the use of renewable energy sources. It also prescribes the required standards in the electricity sector and is aimed at making the regulation process more transparent. The bill will be sent to the Senate for its approval. Government is taking steps to ban smoking of ganja while driving. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Transport, Works and Housing, Dr. Morris Guy, says that provision will be added to the Road Traffic Act. We feel that we have the, the obligation and the responsibility to ensure that people who are driving should not be smoking at the same time. And that, Mr. Speaker, will attract a fee, attract a fee of $10,000. He made that disclosure on Tuesday as Parliament debated the Joint Select Committee of Parliament's report on the Road Traffic Act. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson also asserted that impaired driving due to alcohol and drugs such as ganja must be addressed under the bill. Use of both alcohol and cannabis can significantly cause impairment to drivers. The enforcement of comprehensive and clear legislation with appropriate penalties and accompanied by public awareness campaigns is a critical factor in reducing road traffic injuries and deaths associated with speed, drunk driving, and the non-use of occupant protection measures such as helmets, seat belts, and child restraints. The House of Representatives adopted the committee's report on the act which seeks to implement more stringent regulations to govern the use of the nation's roadways. Persons who serve as jurors in civil and criminal cases will be getting increased allowance payments. Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding signed regulations on June 17 to facilitate the increase. The regulations were gazetted on June 18, 2015. It increases a juror's stipend from $500 to $2,000. Seeking the increase is part of government's justice reform program, which includes legislation to improve how the jury system functions. The allowance is intended to assist in meeting jurors' traveling expenses and refreshment during each day's jury service. It was last adjusted in 1998. In the meantime, the Justice Minister says the Jury Amendment Bill 2015 will soon be brought to Parliament. It will, among other things, widen the pool from which jurors can be selected and protect jurors from adverse actions from employers in response to their service. And finally, 21 digital and animation trainers are benefiting from a month-long training session in 2 and 3D programs. The training is part of the Youth Employment in Digital and Animation Industries program and classes started on Monday. 
It's facilitated by last year's signing of a 20 million US dollar memorandum of understanding between the Science and Technology Ministry and the World Bank. Science and Technology State Minister Julian Robinson says the training will expose participants to global animation standards and create an industry-ready pool of players. We felt it was important to try and establish some standards to have a baseline along which we could operate and a baseline which would not just be accepted locally but something which would be accepted globally. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amandra Chisholm, thank you for watching.